How's Sorry it going? about that. My, my computer decided to update right, ah. <laughs> right as I was trying to get this set up this morning. But um, hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you anyway, apart from that? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Where do we find you? I'm actually in California right now. Um, I'm in Santa Rosa visiting my my parents and my family here. So, yeah. <laughs> ah, nice. Is it a busy time in life for you at the moment or are you getting some downtime? It's a bit busy, a bit chaotic. I, I'm kind of at the, I'm reaching the end of some work and then I'll have some downtime, but I'm right in the middle of all of the busyness right now. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about your journey as a music fan, just yourself. So what's your earliest memory of hearing music? Ooh, my earliest memory with music was actually um, sitting at a piano when I was, I think, two, two years old, two or three, and playing the piano keys. And something about that, I found, I remember finding two notes that sounded really good together, like making my first chord. And um that is probably my earliest memory with music because it's something about that I found so exciting. Um, and it kind of set the stage for me wanting to keep making music. Um, and then as far as l just listening to music, I feel like my earliest memories are actually listening to, to queen. Like we had this, uh, I remember like, I, I must've been really small cause I'm like looking up at this giant shelf at the, at the, um, CD player that we had. And like, and we're listening to Queen, and I remember that, um, and just really getting into it. I think I was dancing like crazy, um, and then I used to sing uh, Britney Spears a lot when I was little. Um, I think most little girls did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Hit Me Baby One More Time, and I was like, my mom always teases me because I was like super tiny and like really sassy singing, you know, I'm not that innocent kind of <laughs> thing, like as a tiny, tiny child, tiny innocent child. Um, but yeah, I think those are my earliest memories of of music. And then watching my dad play the piano was really inspiring to me too. Um, I used to love love watching him play the piano, um, and that was really you know inspiring me as 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 a little kid to want to learn. Yeah, so your your parents were big music fans too. Yes, I feel like my I've really come to appreciate my parents' vast taste in music and that they exposed me to a lot of different genres and different kinds of music from an early age um so i thank you mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> and when did you what was the first music that you claimed as your own it wasn't something from you or mom and dad or off the radio or something like that i think that was definitely avril lavigne um i had an obsession with avril lavigne i also really liked no doubt that i had like i had like four CDs um, that I would play on repeat. And there was um, Avril Lavigne and No Doubt, Red Hot Chili Peppers. And um, I feel like there was, oh, Nora Jones. Uh, oh, nice. So it was like a nice variety in there. But yeah. Avril Lavigne was like my first obsession, like musical obsession that I had as a kid. So a lot of <laughs> strong female characters in that lineup. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's an album that reminds you of your teenage years? Ooh. Um, Iron and Wine. Um, I, was it Naked As We Come? Um, there, was a, there was a specific Iron and Wine album that I was listening to. I like, because I went through like a really heavy rock phase because I was playing rock band a lot around the age of like 12 and 13. But then as I, I got into high school, I went, I started listening to a lot of indie folk music and sort of, um, and I had this playlist that had a lot of iron and wine on it. Uh, cause my friend had sort of introduced me to them. And, um, and so when I think of my teenage years, I think that's that's definitely the the band that comes. Oh, oh no, no! Now I'm thinking. Okay, um, Death Cab for Cutie. Death Cab for Cutie is definitely um, nice. Stairs, I think, was the record that I was listening to a lot at that time. Um, they were also the first band that I saw live. Um, it was the first concert that I went to. Um, so yeah, Death Cab for Cutie. I'm changing my answer. 
<laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> I, we had that guy forget he played at our wedding. Yes. Yes. Had, um, the track, the track Transatlanticism uh, was played at oh, our, at that's our wedding. That's beautiful. Yeah, because that's... I'm from the UK. Yeah. And my wife is from Canada. So it kind of, that whole, I need you to so much closer line and Transatlantic. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. I feel like Death Cab for Kitty, like those, their songs have such an amazing sense of, of like the lyricism in those songs is really amazing. I feel like that, that was really inspiring to me when I was first listening to those albums. Um, one of the things that always stood out to me were the lyrics. Um, just incredible, incredible writing <laughs> in general. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. N- do you pay attention to new music still? You keep following new new stuff that's coming out? Yes. Yeah. Um, I've been listening to a lot of indie artists lately um, that have been popping up. Um, Leith Ross, um, I've been listening to them a lot. And then um, Addison Grace, um, he has an amazing repertoire of music too that's been coming out. And then um, there's another artist, I can't remember their name but there's a lot of these sort of like beautiful indie artists that have been coming up um in you know on my social media feed and I'm just like wow these these lyrics and these voices are so incredible and there's so much talent I feel like I really appreciate the internet for being a place where people can get discovered now and and you see all of these these people that that pop up and are just so incredibly talented and um and so I've just been, I feel, I feel like I discover somebody new every time I, you know, open my phone and go on Instagram or TikTok or there's always somebody new that comes up that is just so incredibly talented. But those are a few off the top of my head that I've been listening to recently. Yeah. Nice. Do you, I know it's a big question, but do you have a all time favorite album? That is super hard. Um, just, just something hmm. comes comes to mind quickly. I think, yeah, I think Come Away With Me by Nora Jones is probably one of my favorites. Um, I know I'll think of something later, but that's <laughs> the first one that came to my head. <laughs> Obviously, Envy of None is like its, its own thing. And you're, you know, a very important part of that. I'm assuming that you have other things going on that you're working towards. So can you tell me anything about that? Yes. Yeah, I am. Um... I have my own solo record that I'm almost done with. <laughs> Finally, it's been a very long time coming. Um, <clears throat> and I've been working on this record for years. Um, I actually, I managed to get um, the guys to to add some tracks to a few of the songs. Um, Alex added guitars to a few tracks. And then Al, uh, Alf and Andy also added some tracks to a couple songs. And um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, But this has been a really long time coming for me. You know, I started I started performing when I was 16 in coffee shops and bars when I was living in Montana and um, really pursuing music from an early age. And so this record and I've written so many songs, but it's been I've just been growing and learning and going through so much. And so it's nice. I feel like I'm finally finally the end of this this sort of chapter and um I'm excited to get this music out there. It a lot of it's very close to my heart. I've put a lot of myself into it, and so I'm very excited to to share this record. Um, and it, there's a lot of variety on it. I think similar to the first Envy of None record, there was a lot of. I feel like it was very eclectic and a lot of different sounds. And um, I think similarly, my record has a lot of different genre influences and and sounds on it. Um, very different vibe than envy of none for the most part there's one song that's that's similar to some of the stuff that i did for envy of none um a little bit heavier a little bit darker um okay but for the most part there's a lot of softer um singer songwriter uh influences of indie rock folk um singer songwriter kind of stuff um and a lot of interesting instruments um Okay. We used saw and cello and um, guquin, or guchin. Guchin is how it's pronounced. I, um, and uh, let's see, I feel like we use hammer dulcimer a lot. Um, 
a lot of kind of just unique instrumentation going on in some of these wow. songs, which I'm excited about. Um, and lots of really beautiful string arrangements, kind of orchestral folk pop uh, kind of vibe happening in some of these songs. Um, and I played a lot of instruments. I hired a lot of talented musicians, um, pulled in a lot of favors. There's a lot going on in a lot of these songs. And so I'm very excited yeah. to to get this project out there. So it sounds really interesting. So you mentioned you played a few different instruments. What do you play? I play on this on this record, I play piano, guitar, mandolin, dulcimer, bazooki, banjo, um, organ, drums, a uh, little bit of everything, synths, um, wow. lots of stringed instruments. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. Lots of time and lots of experimentation going on. Yeah, sounds fascinating. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've what you've done. So, um, so what's next for you? I am. I am actually going on a short tour. Um, and by we, I mean me and a couple of my friends um, who are in a hard rock band called Dreadlight. Um, and they're sort of my my best my best friends in Portland. And uh, we are going on a little tour. Um, we're doing some house shows. We're playing some venues across the Midwest. I think we're going to Nebraska and Montana. And um, furthest east we're going, I think, is Chicago. Um, and uh, yeah, so it it should be it should be exciting. Um, but also, it's a pretty low key kind of little summer tour that we're doing. Um, and I'm finishing the record, and then and then I'm gonna like sleep and fall apart and uh do some emotional healing which i think we all need at this point but um i'm kind of like i'm i'm at that point where i'm like ready for for to cocoon and come back out like grown <laughs> like, but then you would have, uh you will have earned a little rest so yes <laughs> enjoy it well i'm excited to see what happens with with your stuff and uh, what you're doing with the guys as well you know i know there's a lot of attention so um i'm excited to see what happens there but in the meantime thank you very much for your time thank and you. um and uh yeah good luck with everything you're doing it sounds like you know the world is your oyster as they say oh my gosh well thank you thank you so much for having me and for for doing this interview i hope we get to to catch up again in the future i have a feeling we might <laughs> <laughs> I'm